Hi, Valfrania here. I am going to demonstrate for you how to use paper clay in a mold and I am going to glue it to a small. But first I want to show you what I'll be using today. Here is the uh, creative paper clay. I really like this stuff. And I will be using cornstarch and a brush to get the cornstarch into the mold so I have quick easy release. I have a small or something that we use to decorate our pieces with. I am going to glue on my molded piece onto that and when you mold your piece Sometimes it cracks, so I use this vinyl spackling with this nifty little knife set that it's a painting knife set, um, but I'm going to use it to apply the vinyl spackling in the cracks. I use E6000 to attach it. And this is a little tip for you. I use in my paint studio, I use a flexible cutting board after I'm done with it in my kitchen when it's got a lot of cuts on it, I buy new and then relegate this to my paint studio to protect the surface of my table. And then when I'm using E6000, I put plastic wrap on top of it so I can just wad up, throw it away if I drip any glue on it. Here's some molds that I use. I recently did a Lego table where I had some rocks and some wood on top of the table for a little scene I painted. That is from Wilton, which is cake mold. You can use cake molds or just go ahead and use molds that are designed for what I'm doing today. This, these are IOD molds. These are excellent. Really like these a lot. So those are the uh, things I'm using besides my glove here to keep the glue off my hands. Those are the things I'm going to be using today when I show you how I do my molds. So let's get started. I think I'm going to use this one to decorate this piece here. And so I start out by putting a little bit of cornstarch in the one I'm using. Just a tad. And then I'm going to use my brush over top of my wastebasket to spread it around. Super easy to do. You don't want a whole ton in it. Just enough to uh, give you a quick release when you're done pressing your paper clay. Now there are other things that you can use. I really like the paper clay. And make sure you don't have any piled up cornstarch because it's gonna affect how your mold works. Really, a lot of people don't mind the cracks and leave them in. Um, it all depends on the look that you're going for. So I am going to just get some paper clay out. The reason I have gloves on is because I, I don't like getting the glue all over my fingers. So I'm just going to start right out with gloves. So you just get your piece out and I need it a little bit to get it thin. And then just kind of place it right over the mold and press it in. It's really quite easy. Take off your extra. Doesn't hurt to start out with a lot of extra because you're just going to push it off the mold anyway after you're done pressing it in. See how I'm pressing it into the mold? getting the excess off. And you don't want a whole lot sitting on top of it because you want it to have a flat back. So just kind of work, keep working it. Take off the extra as you go along. You, you'll learn to judge it after a while. Uh, and you can always trim off. I, I use a little craft knife to trim off the excess. Uh, that is left on after pressing it in, but for the most part, when you work it, you're gonna get you're gonna get it nice and flat. Just keep working on it till you are happy with what you see. Okay, I now have it pressed into the mold. 
And because I have that cornstarch on this, this should pull out fairly easy. Just do it very carefully. Just kind of bend it here and there. Work on pulling it out very gently. It's nice that these are so very flexible. And just kind of work at it, take your time. Too often we are in a hurry and we just mess our stuff up because we just want it done now. But be very, very patient and work on pulling it out. Okay, so my next step is to prepare it to put it on here. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna flip it over. And it came out really nice, so there's not gonna be any trim work I need to do here. And then I'm, let's see, I'm gonna put my, my clay back in the package so it doesn't dry out on me. What I do is I put it back in the package and I fold it over and then I put it inside a Ziploc because I don't want it drying out. I did this at the General Finishes Expo uh, for the first time a couple years ago and kept the piece that I molded in a plastic bag and it was still soft a year later. So I could uh, glue it on something very easily. Okay, so I'm taking the uh, glue. This is really good stuff, this E6000. And I'm just going to spread it around with my finger once I get it on here. Be careful not to get too much, but you know, I have put uh, some plastic wrap on my um, cutting mat that I'm using so I can just roll it up and toss it when I'm done if I get glue all over it. <clears throat> so basically, I'm just going to take my finger and spread it around. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. And just very make sure you get to the edges because you want those edges to stick down really well. Now this is a really delicate design. Um, the last one I did was for that Lego table. It was much more solid. So it's a little bit easier to do, but but you just take your time doing it. You'll get it spread around. This is really great stuff. But don't be in a hurry. Just take your time. Spread it around really nice. You could use, um, if you don't want to use your finger, you could use, I, I have a stir stick here somewhere. You could use your stir stick to move it around. I'm just gonna use my finger, it's just easier. And uh, I always wait till it's dry. And then I fill in the cracks. And, and of course, depending on your style, because some of your pieces, you know, if you've got an antique piece or something that's you know like old world style, you may want to leave the cracks in. It can add character to your design. Uh, but for the most part, I usually fill in my cracks. I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionistic person. Okay, so I've got it spread around. And when you apply it, make sure you press down the edges really well. Uh, just pick it right up. Be careful how you handle it. And then lay it right on top. And then press it down. Make sure you get those edges. This is a ceramic, so I will probably paint it with sticks. And then paint right over it. And then we'll do some blending and some dry brushing to bring out the details. So there you have it. Super, super easy to use. I'll let that dry for a few hours. And then I'll have a really neat new staging piece. Feel free to ask questions. And, you know, don't, I'm always saying this, but don't be afraid to try a new project, a, a new technique. When I first did these, I'm th I was thinking, this is a few years back, I was thinking, oh man, that just, I don't know if I want to do that or not. But once you do it, oh, it's fun, it's decorative, it's different from the average person. Most people don't get into molds and, and dry brushing and all that stuff. So to make your pieces stand out, do these extra things. It really makes a difference. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.